Hello, welcome back to another episode of Shed the Shame. We're already on episode five. That is amazing. Five episodes. Today, we have got a fantastic guest, Jagdeep. I met her through some kind of health coaching connections, and she's going to tell you all about herself because she's a badass. Um, But just off the top, we just wanted to say welcome. Hope you are having a great day, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm here today with my amazing co-host, Aljun, and she's going to tell you about herself if you haven't heard already, because you probably should know who she is. Thanks, Alex. So I am Aljun Serber, the CEO and founder of Lady Box, an organic period subscription box celebrating menstrual cycles. Um, we launched the campaign Shed the Shame in support of the work that Water Aid does to bring clean water and sanitation to 30 countries across the globe. If you are so inclined to help support the campaign, please purchase a water bottle. If you're on YouTube looking at the video, this is what the water bottle looks like. You can find it on shedtheshame.co. And I am so excited to be doing these podcast episodes with Alex. She's a beautiful human and we are so excited to have you, Jagdeep. Yay. Yeah. My, my bottle is on in route. I think I got the email, so I can't wait for it to arrive. You will start to see me on these, these videos with my Shed the Shame water bottle. I'm so excited about it. And if you haven't heard about the work that I do, um, I am the CEO of the Agenda Period. The Agenda Period is a planning system and app that helps women and menstruators understand the four phases of their menstrual cycle and use that knowledge to inform their planning and increase their productivity. You can tell uh, Aljulin and I have both said these things a few times. So if you want more information, as always, it's going to be in the show notes. We'll point you to all of the relevant links so you can check out the work and integrate it into your life in whatever way makes sense. Um, But now we've got a a fun, interesting menstrual fact. Hit us, Aljolin. Recently, and, and Alex, you can maybe put some more details on it. Australia has made it possible to include menstrual leave um, as a policy. I don't have the full details on it, but that is very exciting and interesting to learn. I saw a couple comments about it, like, oh, why don't people just like have it, you know, more sick days or anything? So there's some really interesting conversations happening. I love that we are normalizing what happens to menstruators, you know, the discomfort that they experience during their cycle sometimes. So uh, that was that was exciting news to see. What what were your thoughts on that? And what are some more details you can share, Alex? We're starting to see a couple other countries pop up with these policies. And I know it's something that we're going to bake into the foundation of the agenda period is like having these kind of opportunities. Um, and what annoys me, honestly, a little bit is um, <laughs> is like when people say like, well, just like give everyone more blah, blah, blah. E- equity means everyone gets what they need. It doesn't mean that everyone gets the same thing. And so it would like it would be like a company forcing me to like paying me for a pair of glasses and saying like, I have to buy you a pair of glasses. Like I don't wear glasses. So why would you buy me a pair of glasses? You know, like maybe we could reallocate that resource for something else. Um, So Mm -hmm. I just, I just really think this is an opportunity to say like, we can help support people to get them what they need. And not everyone needs the same thing and that's okay. That's truly what equity means. So I've, I've seen a lot of interesting conversations on that side. And I, I'm excited because these things that push our buttons, it's like, ooh, there's something juicy here. Like there's something that we need to learn more about. Here's a great opportunity. So I'm excited to see how the conversation continues to evolve and just hell yeah for the, the brave people leading this charge. It's awesome. Yay. Yeah, totally. And, and, and the fact that it's like happening outside the US primarily is very interesting, which is why I am excited to chat with Jagdeep about like her background, her experience, and then like, you know, what it's been like culturally for her to experience her period. So um, yeah, excited to have you here. <laughs> Yay. So let's kick off with a cycle check-in and Jagdeep as our esteemed guest. What, what phase are you in in the cycle? If you want to talk about it, how are you checking in with your cycle today? Oh, that's amazing. Well, first of all, thank you, ladies, for this. Like, I love your energy. I love what you're bringing to the world. And it's so needed. So thank you so much for all of this. And you ladies, energy is just like, oh, amazing. And then Alex, you with the red, and it's all like, so perfect. I love it. (laughs) So I actually um, just finished my period two days ago. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. 
So let, let's go. <laughs> so what do you what do you want to share with me there, Alex or Algelin? <laughs> yes, you're you're in the follicular phase. Yeah. So do you feel your do you notice your energy shifting or changing? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Still. And I work a lot with the moon. So I, I love that I, I I'm so in sync with the moon. So we just finished the well, we're just into um yesterday in the full moon. So it's like so like that shedding and releasing and ready for the new energy. So yeah, absolutely love it. I love for us to be in sync with all that's going on around and within us, because it gives us that more power to work with things rather than feel like everything's working against us. So that's what I love about all of this stuff. It all really comes together, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, full moon in Cap. That's what we had yesterday. The strawberry June moon, full moon in Capricorn. So hold on to your butts. We are coming into the Capricorn season during Cancer. So I, I'm I'm really just tip, dipping a toe in all the astrology. If you know more about it than I clearly just <laughs> described, please help us out in the comments. Um, I am in the luteal phase, and so uh, definitely feeling some some type of way about that. I the luteal phase is the hardest phase for me. So learning to love myself in every phase is definitely my my best work in the world right now. So yeah, especially around the full moon, I was like, oh, I feel so I feel so lack of confidence, and now it's all amplified by the full moon. Dang it! <laughs> what about you, Algelin? How are you checking in with um, your cycle? Alex Keep remembering that you are a beautiful human. You are a beautiful human, and you deserve <laughs> to be here. Um, so, having an IUD, I really don't know. I kind of just base it off of how I'm feeling, how things, you know, are maybe smelling. <laughs> so, it was interesting. Um, the other day, my partner and I were in bed, and he was like, "I think you might actually be on your period," and I was like. Probably, it smells different down there this week. So um, I'm probably on my period right now, but I just don't have any visual signs of withdrawal. There you go. I love that you guys can talk about that and kind of be in sync with that together. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna shift into this amazing topic with Jagdeep. So please tell us about your background and then kind of talk, talk us through um, the, like the cultural aspects and, and just everything we kind of talked about offline before we, we started recording. I'd just love to hear from you. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, thanks again for having me here. Um, what I do is I work with women um, to empower them to basically speak up, speak their truth um, so that they can empower their children. And also I do everything energy, like I love energy work. I'm um, a Reiki practitioner, I do EFT, TFT. I love working with the moon but the birth charts and you know when we incorporate all of it i mean that's where we kind of really step into our power and do you know bring our best selves whether that's in home family business friendships everything um so i absolutely love that and i've been through a, a journey myself so that's what's got me to where i am you know i've been through all the 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 crap so to speak <laughs> and you know i've grown and evolved from it so that gives me more um, passion to work with this because I know it's doable and I see the growth in my kids when I see the growth in myself so it's really great to see when we shift ourselves, our energy around anything that we do it really spills into everything that we do um, speaking about periods this is awesome because this is something growing up it was never talked about right so I'm sure I heard about it in school I mean that was a long time ago it feels like <laughs> But I remember when I did get my period, like I thought I was dying. Like I didn't know what the hell was going on. My mom had never talked about it. Um, and like I said, I'm sure in school, but I, I just didn't remember. Um, and then kind of think back, it was always a shameful thing. It wasn't until my 30s that I actually, it was a conversation I had with a friend and her spin on the period, it was like that, you know, that light bulb moment in your life where you're like, oh my gosh, because I would always be disgusted with myself when I had my period. I'd be like, oh, so I'm disgusting. And, you know, all these things I said to myself, which now, oh my gosh, I can't believe I talked to myself like that. But it also, um, for me, what I saw, the shift within my flow and within the way I felt about myself, when I kind of went from the, oh, 
disgusting, horrible, and this just sucks. To now, um, when I get my period, I actually have a smile on my face. I'm like, yes. <laughs> you know, I love it. I'm like, oh, okay, time to shed and release this. And just that mindset around it has been so um, transformed, like just transformed the way I see and feel about myself. Um, so going back a little bit here, backtracking, I remember like when we would go grocery shopping and my mom would buy her pads, she would hide them under the other thing, grocery, like put the other grocery on top, hide it. And you know, it was hidden in a bag and taken up to her room. And so that was normal because whatever we see as children, that is what we see as normal. So to me, that was just normal. But it's funny because in my body, it didn't feel normal. Like there was like, well, what is so bad about it? And I was always kind of that kid that, but why, why, why? <laughs> and, you know, with mom, it was like, well, we just don't talk about it. And I'd be like, but why, you know? So when I shifted that with me, I mean, I have two kids, my daughter and my son is 12 and they know, like they call it mom's on her thing. Like, oh, mom's on her thing. Do you have your thing, mom? <laughs> you know, kind of cute. But they know because, you know, it, it's, it's normal, like mom's pads are in the bathroom and, you know, they know, and it's not just a disgusting thing, right? Because it's so important to make it normal. And I mean, even with my mom now, like, it's just such a, we don't talk about it. Like, it's just shh, like, you know, and, and it, you know, what was really interesting is we were, it was almost like you don't go to the temple because temple's a sacred place. You don't go to the temple when you're on your period. And so it's, we're, we're going, well, this is dirty and this is clean. So I'm dirty. So I, I take that on as I'm dirty, right? And, and yeah. when I think about that now, I mean, I'm, I'm blessed that I've been able to break through that conditioning, step into my own beliefs and you know break that from my kids and the people I work with but when I think about people who are not strong enough or don't feel they're strong enough to embrace it and step into it we're now we're just repeating these cycles of I'm dirty I'm disgusting and you know the way that we are awakening to now is we embrace everything about ourselves all the parts all of it Right. So I'll kind of pause there because I've kind of shared little bits and bobs. So I'll, I'll pause there and uh, hand it over to you later. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions that kind of pop up. So I'll just say them both and then you can kind of talk about them as you will. But I would love for you to share a little bit about your cultural intersections and, and how, you know, how that kind of shaped maybe those relationships with your mom and your parents early on, because other listeners will, will likely identify with that intersectionality that you have. And then the other question I have is as a health coach, what do you think that it does to us to see a part, like essentially hate our body monthly? Like, what do you think that does mentally, emotionally? What do you think that does to us as people in the world? when we so consistently distrust and find disgust with our body. I'd love for you to talk about both of those things. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'm gonna speak on the second part first because I love that because it's so powerful. I mean, all of it's very powerful, but any like words are so powerful, right? So when we say anything I am, it, you know, I, I even teach like my class and even my kids and friends I'm kind of that annoying person that's always like careful with your words watch what you say because even when we speak anything about ourselves we're speaking it into existence right so I am dirty or I am you know whatever we say I am we're programming our brain to believe that so if once a month we're going through I am dirty I am disgusting it doesn't matter if, if we're working, well, it does matter. I'm going to rephrase that. It does matter that we still continue to work on ourselves, but we almost go, we're almost confusing our brain going, well, am I dirty or am I lovable? Am I good or am I, you know, we're, we're it, it's confusing, right? It's like when we, when we place an order at a restaurant, do we go, I'll get the Big Mac or the McChicken? Mm, you know, it, well, what do you want? What do you believe about yourself, right? And, and they are, words are so powerful. So 
even when I do this with my kids or my, my daughter will say, oh, I'm so bad because I got mad. No, you've had that feeling. It's not you are. It's a feeling. Right? So I understand that we have these feelings and it's not about, you know, I always say it's not about sprinkling sugar on the shit. We're not about, you know, sprinkling sugar all over the negativity. We need to dig in. I know I love that. <laughs> we need to dig in and we need to deal with what's going on like I didn't just go that was a chapter my mom talked about it I'm just not going to deal with that and I'm going to just sprinkle positivity for my kids that's not what it's about it's going back there right going back there and going that's interesting you know and I wonder what happened in my mom's childhood for her to believe that that was disgusting and and how it trickles into all of our generations and when I think back to how painful and how miserable, bless her, my mom was around her period because she wasn't allowed to feel what she felt. So she had to shut down. So then she was probably bitter because she wasn't allowed to feel. And then on top of what your period and you're not accepting your body and what it's going through. So you're going to feel even more anger and resentfulness and all of that towards yourself and then towards everybody around you. Right. So. When it comes to our mind, when we're not allowing ourselves to accept what we feel, we're kind of, it, it's such a disconnect, right? That, that's what it is, is an absolute disconnect. And I feel this, but I'm not allowed to feel it. I'm going through this, but I'm not allowed to go through it. It just doesn't make sense, right? So that's where our resistance and our struggle comes in, where we're going, it's like saying to a kid when they're crying, oh, that's okay, you don't need to be upset. Yeah, they do because they are upset. Or, or, you know, who are we to tell someone how to feel? And that's what we do. And then that's where all these addictions come in and all these things come in because we're trying to suppress, well, I feel this inside my body, but I'm not allowed to feel it. So I'm going to go find something to just pretend I don't feel it, but it's going to come up at some point, right? And then it's like, it's like exploding over that breadcrumb and it's like it's not even about the breadcrumb it's all this other crap that you're stuffing down and not allowing yourself to feel right and it's so interesting when you go back to the cultural thing and and I'm sure this is in a lot of cultures because really you know we, we, there's a lot of similarities as well that I see but even now in my parents I see things that they have not dealt with that spill into conversations or the way that they do things but until you're ready to go okay what is going on here it's um you can't make anyone change or see things we can only bring the world and hope that people kind of hear it and go that resonates yeah I, I want to I want to get this more I want to feel that way I want to feel what I'm feeling but when it comes to cultural I definitely feel there's a disconnect because um, I, it's funny, I had a conversation with my dad a few weeks ago and I brought up when I was pregnant, right? And it was just me talking about, you know, the universe and how we, because my dad's very, I want to say he's spiritual, but I'll say he's more religious because spiritual, I think, is very open. We're open to everything. Religious is very, this is how it is and that's how it is. So I, I was talking about spirituality with my dad and I brought up when I was pregnant and I kind of heard the pause because it's like, what is she going to say next? <laughs> we don't talk about when we're pregnant. These things don't happen. Even though she's got two kids, it just happened. you know. <laughs> so it's, um, it's interesting, but I'm definitely trying to bring in the norm around it's normal. We, we know what we have to do to get pregnant. We know how it all works but we just don't talk about it. So just bringing in that gentleness around making it more normal. So that's a little bit about that. Um, I'll mute again and, and let you. Um, so uh, something that has been interesting to me, um, and, and I don't know what your faith background or you know like what you follow in faith, but um, I have a couple of you know Jewish, friends, um, Muslim friends. And, you know, during Ramadan, my Jewish friends who are women and men straight, they, during their period, they couldn't um, go to the mosque to pray and they had to stay home. And then like they, but the nice thing was for them, they didn't have to observe the fast 
<laughs> Thank goodness. But um, what is it, what you said earlier about you know not being able to go to t the temple and pray when you're on your period was interesting to me because I'm like thinking in my head what if really you know women not being women on their periods not being able to go pray in temples was really a signal to men to know who is of childbearing age and oh they're on their cycle so can I like I don't know if they would think about it but can I like keep track of that and know when to procreate with this child bearing person or like of age person so that's something to think about like did the the thought of shame primarily come from men so that they could like have that power to know when to make a baby with somebody that is such an interesting perspective around it wow that is uh i mean yeah we how would we know the answer to that but that is such an interesting thought yeah i'm going hmm yeah yeah, and it, and it is to me, it, it, it's that separation again, right? We are separating you from me. And then we, we say we are all one and there's all unity and it's equality and all of it, right? But there is so much disconnect. I mean, gosh, we're in 2021, like, you know, and in, now we are talking about this, like, it just seems like it's gone on way too long and it needs to, like, even with our kids, right? I mean, I don't know about other families and other, you know, even within my own family, I'm sure my kids would be too young to talk about these things, but I, I don't want my daughter to go on her period and then be like, what was this? And then almost be mad at me because, well, why wouldn't my mom tell me? Because as a mother, as a woman, as, you know, all of that, it's, it's almost our, we need to share this. It's not an option. <laughs> you know, you, you don't have the option to stay quiet because our daughters, our, our nieces, or all these girls around us need to know you. You're not disgusting or dirty when you have a period. And it doesn't, and it almost like you said, it gives the boys that power as well to go, ew, that's gross. Is it? What, what, like, you know, what's gross about it? Why don't you, and, and I mean, I'm comfortable enough that I would say to the boys, so let's talk about it. What's disgusting about it? Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not annoying. Like, even with my son's friends, like we have these conversations where they're just kind of like, oh, here she goes. But it's like, tell me more about that. Right. When they'll say something like, how do you, why do you feel that way? So I'm always like the feeling and talking it out, but you also see them kind of soften as well because they want to talk about these things, but they're not, they don't have the safe space to talk about it. So I see even these, you know, I'm not saying I'm talking to the boys about periods, but I'm saying in general about feelings, right? So whenever we shut down feelings, whether it's about periods or anything else, there's that disconnect, there's that something, something's wrong with the way that you feel. So when we make feeling and talking, communication, all of that normal, it just opens up a whole different world. And this is where as health coaches, life coaches, even therapists, right? I went to therapy for a, a fair share of years and I would come out of the therapist's office feeling worse than when I went in because I would go in and talk about things, they would come up and then you go, now what do I do with this, right? So with coaching, what I do with my coaching is things come up with the clients, but then why I love the energy work that I do is we almost close that container. So if they're into energy healing, we'll kind of do a little meditation or a little Reiki at the end where they have now released something, but then we have filled it with that unconditional love. And you know, you're surrounded with this love and healing and then they go away. So they've released, but then they filled it up with something that makes them feel good. And that's where gratitude comes in as well. And compassion, feeling those feelings and having the compassion for yourself right? Because we can only give someone else what we have. So if we're spilling out this compassion, but really we're feeling like I'm dirty and this and that, again, there's a disconnect, right? We can't give someone else what we don't have ourselves. Totally. Oh, this is such a good conversation. So I think where I, I kind of want to wrap it up today and end on it today 
is if someone's listening and they resonate, they're like, yeah, I have all these cultural things in the way. I've got all of these things with my kids and I feel weird. I don't even know how to talk to them, but I know I need to or should. How would someone even start to peel back these layers for themselves so that they can have this better relationship despite cultural challenges, despite ch challenges with their children? So like, this can be overwhelming. So where would, from your expertise, how would someone start to, to go on this healing journey? So the number one thing is you have to be comfortable with your own body, your period yourself, because you just, that's just where it starts. You have got to be okay with where you are. Like this is, whether it's the body, the mind, anything, it all starts within, right? So you have to go, okay, where does this go back to? Is this my mom's beliefs? Is this my grandma's beliefs? Is this my dad? Whose voice is this in my head? Is it mine? And if it's yours, that's also okay, right? But really sit with that and go within because your body is so amazing that it will speak to you. So when you ask yourself that question, whose voice is this? Or why do I feel this way? You will get an answer. And, and, and a great thing that I love to do is sit with yourself when you ask yourself a question and welcome the pause because we're so scared of that pause. We've got to busy ourselves. We've always got to keep going. Sit with that pause and then go to where do I feel this in my body? If you're feeling it in your throat, that's because you've been shut down when you want to speak up, right? So if you're going, oh, I felt a tingle in my throat or I felt something in my throat or my chest, right? That's you being shut down to what you're, you're not allowed to feel. Or I felt that in my stomach, in your solar plexus, which is your power center. So did you feel like your power was taken away? So really just stop, ask yourself the question, whose voices are these? Whose beliefs are these? And then sit with your body and even place your hand on that part of your body and breathe into it and acknowledge it and just go, thank you for this, but this does not serve me for where I am right now. Like, I want to move on from these beliefs. We want to shed these. We want to pull off the layers. And, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. Be gentle with yourself. Take the time, but just go, go to yourself because we have all this support and guidance and there's all these amazing women like you ladies, what you're doing is phenomenal. Reach out, but really you've got to start within. Go within because even when you come to life coaches, health coaches, it's got to be like when you go to someone, right? You've got to know, okay, this is what's going on. We can help you break it down, but you are the one who's got to do that work. So start with what is going on for me? What do I need help with? Do I need help to peel back these layers? If I do, okay, hey ladies, something's going on. I don't know what it is. Help me out. <laughs> so really sit with it. Listen to your body, tap into your body. It's so phenomenal. It gives you all of your, like, just, just feel whatever's coming what beautiful permission to actually slow down long enough to hear yourself. Jagdeep, thank you for being with us today on this episode of Shed the Shame. I was taking notes because I've got some homework now from the work that you were talking about. So just really appreciate your time and attention today. Yeah, thank you so much, Jagdeep. Um, I really, again, too, love the, you know, whose voice is this? And, you know, paying attention to the body part that is actually like really calling out for you to like give it that power and space that it needs and remembering to be um, kind to yourself as you're going through this journey. I think that's really important for everybody listening. Please be kind to yourself um, as you go through it. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks everybody. If you're interested in being a guest, check it out. It'll be in our show notes. And remember when you tell your stories, you give other people permission. As Algin likes to say, the more we share, the more we shed the shame. So thank you all so much. And we'll see you next week.